Coming up on November 7th, the residents of the Spring Grove School District will head to the polls for a facility referendum. And Rachel Oudstuen, the superintendent of schools from Spring Grove, will join us now to break down uh, what people will be voting on. And before we get into the specifics of the referendum, Rachel, uh, tell us how we got to this point. How did uh, well, how long of a process was it? How did you guys decide that this was going to be what voters were going to vote on? Sure. Well, you know, I think um, it's it's interesting. We haven't had a, a big building renovation for 30 years. Um, and our district has uh, done one about every 20 years or every 30 years. Uh, we did one in the, in the 20s and the 50s and the 80s. And now here we are asking, is it time again for us to look at something? Um, and we went through we collected data three different ways before we came up with our referendum question. We had um, experts come into our building and look in every nook and cranny, look at um, our HVAC systems, the roofs, the windows, everything. And they so they did a facility assessment. Then we did an educational adequacy assessment, which meant we asked all the people who use this space, what's working, what's not working, what needs to be changed. Took all of that data, uh, put it together, and then put out a survey to our community asking our community uh, which we talked back last March about that, that we um, we asked our community, what what do you value? What do you want to see done? And how much are you willing um, to, to, what can you afford to pay basically for our building? Um, and so we found out we had over um, a third of our, our, our taxpayers respond to that survey, which they, um, which is a really strong res response, found out that like, we really care about, about our, the infrastructure of our building, roof, um, HVAC, windows, um, and improving some of our um, um, congested areas like in the kitchen, cafeteria, um, and also really value uh, the career tech ed space. We call it the CTE space, which for a lot of us is what we know as the shop or um, the wood shop. Um, it's where a lot of our trades work is done, and we know that is such a huge um, push right now. We need to be training students for these positions, and we need to look at updating our facility. So I uh, didn't mean that our community didn't support the other areas. Um, it's just that they uh, there's only so much money, and this is where they wanted the money to go. And the referendum has been divided into two questions. Why was it divided into two as compared to putting everything into one question? Great question. And I've been asked that in the community, so I'm glad it came up. Um, so we decided, so we we learned that our, um, the response in the survey said that um, $24 million is too high, but 16 was kind of that point where it was like, yeah, we can support this. So we decided to be very intentional about that because we can't afford to have a referendum question fail. We need to take care of our building. So we put about 12 million on the, um, infrastructure. Um, we have, some of our pipes are 95 years old. They've been well cared for. I mean, we've had a history of, um, maintenance teams that have taken unbelievable care of this building. Um, and so the fact that we have 95 year old pipes working is pretty impressive, but we've reached the point where it's time to, to replace some of them. Um, and so we wanted to make sure that we locked in that, that first question, taking care of our building because it's so important. Um, some of our windows are, they're just not energy efficient. They don't close all the way. So they're letting lots of warm air out during the winter. Um, we have some roof sections that need to be repaired. So we wanted to lock that in with that first question. Then, because our community said we want to look at the CTE, the career tech ed space, we put that on as our second question. So that the first question is really about taking care of the building that we currently have. That second question is a about a $4 million um, addition, a career tech ed addition that would be on our back. Um, we don't know exactly where we're envisioning. It might be in part of our um, black topped playground area, not all of it. Um, but that is a second question. So people say, well, do I have to choose between the two? No, the first question must pass in order for the second question to pass. So if the first question passes and the second question has enough votes to pass, then we do both projects. If only the first question passes then and the second question doesn't, we still do the first um, part of the project, the $12 million taking care of our building. Um, if the first question didn't pass, and the second question did pass for the career tech ed space, it still wouldn't happen because our first question must must pass. Does it need a 50% plus one to pass on both these questions? Uh, does it need a 60% to pass? How does that uh, work when it comes to actually getting this thing across the finish line? 50% plus one. 
we're hoping it's higher than that. We, we're hoping we've done our homework, listened to the voices in our community, um, and that we're putting a project in front of them that they support. But 50 plus one is what we need. And how can residents find out uh, how much this will actually cost them on a uh, annual, a monthly, et cetera basis? Sure. We've been sending out a number of um, flyers in the, in the mail, um, putting a lot of things on social media, directing people to our website. And when you get on our website, the very first thing you see is a click here to learn more about the referendum. And when you go there, there's a referendum calculator. And so you can go right in, plug in either if, if, um, if you're looking at your residential impact, you plug in your home value and you find out exactly to the dollar what you'll be paying. Um, same thing for commercial. Uh, the one that's different is if you own ag land. And in that case, um, it, this is an interesting thing because in the past, in the 80s, we would have heard that the la ag land owners, they build the schools because the impact tax impact lands very heavily on their shoulders. And that's not the case anymore. Now, um, the state of Minnesota has come up with an ag to school credit. It's a 70% tax credit on all ag property. You don't have to apply for it. It's just automatically applied to your, to your amount, your tax impact. And so when you go to that calculator, you put in your parcel land, um, your parcel ID, and then because every single, um, every, every parcel is specific to that um, individual, that information then goes to our financial advisors, Ellers, and they look it up and then they either call you or email you, whatever you say is your preference, and they'll tell you exactly what your tax impact is. And you have to put in, like if you have a, a number of parcel IDs, then you can put all of those in and they'll figure out exactly what that is. But it will be with a 70% ag to school tax credit. So it will be significantly lower than what you're expecting if you're expecting this to be like the like the 80s. And from what I understand, there's a couple of opportunities for uh, folks to show up and ask questions of their own here in the coming weeks. Is that correct? That is correct. Uh, we have a couple of um, more community meetings. We have one tomorrow, uh, October 10th from 5 to 6 p.m. We also have one on um, next week, Tuesday, October 17th from 5 to 6. That second, the first one is here at school. The second one on the 17th is up at the cinema, at the Spring Grove Cinema. Um, but I also say you can call or stop by anytime and we'll give you a tour of the spaces if you want to see what the building looks like to see what we're talking about. Um, and also just to ask questions about um, how will this impact me um, and we can help someone with a calculator if they want help figuring out exactly what their tax impact is. As for voting itself, uh, let's say folks aren't going to be around on Tuesday, November 7th, how can they vote early and if folks are going to be around on that date, where the where do they vote and what are the hours the polls will be open? Yes, the so election day is November 7th. Um, and we will be up at the Fest building that day. Uh, and the polls are open 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. But if you can't go on election day, you can come in for early voting in the school office uh, anytime during regular hours, 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. We're here. Um, we've all been trained by the county in um, early voting. And it's just a simple process that you can do. And you can actually, you can either come and fill out an application and take your ballot with you, or you can actually vote right here in the office. Are we missing anything, anything else you need to uh, pass on to the public as long as uh, you got the forum this morning? Um, I, I think we hit the big ones. I wanted to be sure. I, I, oh, I actually, I do have one. Um, okay. Something that people often ask about, we talk about that um, our, one of our questions is addressing um, the heating and ventilation systems, the HVAC systems. And a frequently asked question I've been getting uh, in this warm fall and when people are sitting in that gymnasium during really warm volleyball games is, does that mean air conditioning? And the answer is yes, it does mean air conditioning. Um, we are now in a time where um, it, it's warm, not just for three months in the summer, but well into the fall and also in the spring. Um, and so that is one question we wanna clear up for people that yes, it does, it does include air conditioning. Rachel, we appreciate you taking some time to uh, tell us about the uh, facility referendum uh, you got coming up on uh, November 7th. And uh, again, uh, it's important to get your voice uh, heard. Uh, folks can do so at the Spring Grove School office or uh, do so on Election Day. As always, uh, pleasure catching up with you, uh, Rachel, and I'm sure we'll be talking soon. Sounds great. Thank you very much, Darren. I appreciate it. Rachel Udstun, the superintendent of schools in the Spring Grove School District, a facility referendum coming up on November 7th.